to analyze themselves and say, for a year of my life, I was deathly afraid of something. Now I'm exposing myself to said thing and I'm not afraid anymore. The media tricked me and I was a fool, but they're not. They're, they don't even seem to self-analyze and go, I got tricked. They're just like, oh, okay, next thing. Hey, Andrew, now, like robots. It's it's mind bending. To oh, me. there's Truth. Tucker. Look at that. Look at that big old smirk, man. He's having the time of his life. He's like, you know what? <laughs> Maybe being gay isn't actually all that degenerate, because this dude's fucking on fire. But let's start with Andrew Tate going on Fox News. That's right, everybody. Apparently, all it takes to get a slot right here with Tucker Carlson is to get banned from every single social media platform. Maybe he's going the Lauren Lauren Chen route, the, well, if they're banned everywhere, they must be interesting person. Well, let's, uh, let's find out. Until a couple months ago, we'd never heard of him. And then the other day, virtually every tech company on the planet banned him. Not just his presence, but also his ability to conduct business on the internet. He was taken off Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, all of it. Then they started telling you that not only was he not allowed to talk, but you weren't allowed to like him because he was an incredibly bad person. So, right, I just, oh man, I hate Tucker Carlson so fucking much. He frames things so dishonestly, but says it in this tone of voice that's so matter-of-factly, and it's just, ugh, it's cringy. He's like, not only were you told that you cannot even have a thought of Andrew Tate, but that jerking off to this man is apparently wrong. But then again, what else can we expect from the tolerant left? They want to control you, and they want to control your penis. I just, there. I hate so much about you, Tucker. And our view on that always is we'll decide for ourselves, since we're adults and Americans, and we'll listen to anyone. Oh, wait, wait, where they say not only is he not allowed to speak, he's allowed to speak. He's just not allowed to speak on some of these social media platforms, okay? I'm banned from TikTok. I'm mad about it. I'm still coping, okay? But guess what? I'm not going to get up here and start whining and crying that I no longer have my right to speak, okay? Because you don't have a right to speak on certain social media platforms. I just don't understand how he can go, we're adults, everybody. We're all adults, lol. Well, then start acting like one. Start recognizing the difference between a private company and, and public enterprise. In our view on that, always is we'll decide for ourselves since we're adults and Americans and we'll listen to anyone we want and we'll come to any conclusion we care to come to about what that person is about. I don't really feel like I've exposed anything. Like I'm truly not a very political person. This is the first time someone's experienced this level of ban. I'm not particularly right wing. I don't vote. I mean, I obviously have my own personal views, but they didn't ban me for that. Um, they Dude, banned me simply because... We've heard you say how the world is degenerate, how women need to close their legs. I mean, sure, some of that isn't overtly political in the same sense as, like, this is who I'm voting for would be. But, I mean, come on. You obviously appeal to a, a political demographic. All right, please, c continue, bald sigma. I had large swaths of the population agreeing to very traditional masculine values... Teenage men and young and young men, 20, 30, 22, 23, 24, were looking up to me and aspiring to be like me. I have a very traditionally masculine life. I have fast cars and a big house and, and a lot of money and a beautiful girlfriend. And they thought they thought this Wait, was... Wait, he's got a girlfriend? What? I hope it's an open relationship, right? Or... Okay. When he says he's teaching people the, the traditional masculine uh, traits and whatnot, that too always sets off some alarm bells in my head because I'm like, hold on. There are certain elements of masculinity that are completely fine, but, like, when you take the approach of don't express emotion, don't do this, be strong and authoritative all the time, well, we've gone over this a hundred times. That's obviously bad for men's mental well-being. And, uh, yeah, wow, his poor girlfriend. Oh, my God. Very, very threatening. And for some reason, <laughs> they decided that it's better if they annihilate me from the Internet and replace me with somebody who's more aligned with whatever they're trying to purport. Tell us what your message is. What do you is. mean replace you? Who, wait, who's the replacement for Andrew Tate? Is it Sneeko? Because he's even arguably more political than Andrew Tate. <laughs> to young men. Yeah, so I think that being a man is very, very difficult. I think that men's issues are largely overlooked. The people in charge of the world pretend to care, but when somebody who's champion, champion, championing men's issues like myself comes forward and finally manages to garner huge percentiles of the public support, I'm silenced. So they're not really interested in men's issues. And there's a lot of young men growing up. So first and foremost, again, I, God, I hate these fucking buzzwords. What are you saying right now? The people in charge 
okay, I get it. I get it, Andrew, okay? They don't want to hear from you anymore. I understand what you're getting at, okay? Or at least that's what probably a good uh, proportion of the Fox News viewers are thinking. But also, yeah, can we just like chuckle and clap maybe uh, for this insane irony about the dude on national television, primetime network, the most viewed talk show on TV talking about how, yeah, you know, I've been so silenced, man. I've been censored. Here's my book about how censored I am. Yo, be sure to check out my next upcoming live event with 1.2 million people who are going to be there live where I'm going to talk about how silenced I've been today that feel very disaffected they feel invisible the agendas that are being forced down their throats are not ge agendas they align with or they feel affinity to or agendas they want and i basically just say to men look it's a very hard life you're going to need to get up work hard go to the gym strong body is a strong mind you're going to have to reject listening blindly to everything you're told reject the slave mind think for yourself get a strong network of brothers work aside them don't tolerate low quality people in your life which means don't tolerate men who just smoke drugs and play video games or men who are dis Hey, I take personal offense to that one. Disloyal or dishonest. By extension, don't tolerate women or girlfriends who are disloyal or dishonest and try and build and create a reality full of high quality people in which you can resist the programming that the Matrix tries to infl uh, influence you with and grow up truly happy. And what happens is when I say these things, they ignore 95% of what I say. They ignore me saying that you need to avoid low quality men and they take the bit where I say avoid women who are dishonest and then they put it on a, a reel, a very short three or four second clip. And then they say, I'm a misogynistic person and I'm dangerous to women and I need to be banned. The problem is that the majority of young men in the world today are completely. In okay. So again, like I get it, my dude, that sometimes there are absolutely deceptively edited clips, but here's the thing. Like I've been clip clip chimped before. Okay. It happens, but I can't really remember when a clip of mine has been cut and edited so deceptively as to make it sound like I was saying something entirely different. Usually it's clipped in a certain way to make it either sound like there's not as much context, so it sounds like I'm just saying one thing instead of, you know, elaborating what I meant by what I just said, but, like, the clips we've seen of you, dude, are you talking about how women are property or how they can kind of be considered property, lol, like... Do you ever t talk about men who are property? <laughs> like, what? I I don't I don't know. It's just funny because he's like they take these little short clips and then claim I'm misogynistic. No, actually, we can just watch a full fucking length feature film of Andrew Taint and we'll quickly learn that you are misogynistic, my dude. So yeah, maybe you've been deceptively clipped here and there. It does happen, and when that does happen, it's shitty. But I mean, we've also seen clips that were not deceptively edited, that were posted by your own fans, that depicted you acting in ways that were obviously misogynistic. Whether it's talking about how women need to just close their legs and should have to uh, wear the number of sex partners they've had on their forehead. Whether it's saying that, well, I mean, historically women were kind of property, right, lol? Like, come on, man. Get out of here, bro. Yeah, good point, chat. Maybe somebody deceptively edited off his hair. Invisible. And social media has made them invisible. If you go into an Instagram feed, you have extremely beautiful women, which is fine. That's they're beautiful. They're allowed to take pictures. But the only men who have followers are men with massive social status, right? Men with Ferraris and money or like rappers. This? What does he? What does he? What status mean? Do, I think the word you're looking for is status. Or people who have YouTube channels, interesting people. If you're a normal man with a normal job. You don't really exist in the online world. It's very difficult to get followers. Nobody replies to your DMs. You don't really matter. You don't have access to the sexual marketplace. It's very difficult Stop. for you to even get any kind of recognition Stop that you're with even the alive. sexual marketplace thing. Oh, God. I've thought I've already explained this a million times, too, about how it's far more comparable to bartering, which makes it a lot more complicated than a a marketplace. Because remember, it's, it's not just you getting something in exchange for money, which is how a marketplace is, we're talking about bartering. You're talking about seeing somebody you're interested in, and then you also need her to be interested in you in return. That's a lot more challenging to find a, a fair, quote-unquote, trade in that aspect. So maybe tangentially you can say, like, well, technically still would be like a marketplace. Fine, whatever, but come on. It doesn't fucking work like that, and that's just ridiculous. I really hate that term because it does overall make it, make it sound like um, sex and relationships are purely just for for gain almost 
And a lot of men feel lost and lonely because of that. And I was championing <laughs> to a degree their issues by saying to them, look, that is unfair perhaps, but that's the way the game works. You need to become a man of importance. You need to become a man of influence or you're going to suffer the pain of being invisible forever. Here is how you do it. I wasn't trying to change the rules of the game. I was just telling the men how to win because I came from nothing and I'm completely and utterly self-made. And I think the reason a lot of men are so depressed is because they feel invisible. They feel like the life is life is too hard. Women expect me to be strong and smart and funny and interesting with a nice apartment and a family. Why is it always blamed so much on women? Like... It, it's true that there are expectations that are placed on men that probably don't do them any good when it comes to the, the aspect of dating, but, like, there's more than that. Before they reach the point where they are interested in dating, they have first been socialized to believe a fuck ton of this bullshit. Whether it's, hey, uh, you shouldn't cry, or you should be more authoritative, or in order to attract a girl, you need to look like you're constantly in charge, never show your emotions. They've been socialized a certain way also. So, I mean, like, some of the expectations that women have for how men should behave, sure, they can be a little bit harmful and ridiculous, but blaming this on women, the way he's acting like this is mostly a problem within men who are trying to date, not true. It starts way earlier than that. Fast car and tall and well-connected and funny, and, and it's just too much for them to handle. And the social <laughs> pressure on men is absolutely a mess. And I was championing their issues. And at the same time, all these social media platforms pretend to care. As soon as somebody they resonate with stands up and champions their issues, they mass blanket ban me, which shows they have absolutely no care for the young men of the world today. They think that by banning me, I'm just going to no. vanish and the young men are no, just... No, it's that you can, you can talk to men about their struggles and how they need help and how there are certain societal aspects that negatively impact men in a unique way, you can do all of that without also shitting so hard on women, acting like women are property, making it sound as if women have sole responsibility when it comes to uh, sexual encounters, making it so that women are all sounding like sluts if they sleep around, but men who sleep around are the baller boss men. Come on, man going to go and start eating the gruel that they're fed on their on their YouTube feed. They don't want to read. They don't want to see transgender people wear makeup. They don't want to see that. They, they want to see a man who has a bunch of money and a nice life and some fast cars and is strong and is confident. They want an action hero. And that's something that large portions of the world still want to be. And, and YouTube and, and social media platforms obviously just don't like the idea of that. They want to get rid of me and try and replace me with something they see as far more malleable trying to create people which are more malleable and more easy to program and more easy to control. So news accounts in the United States. More easy to program and control. That's right, guys, look out. They wanna insert you with microchips. It's funny because, again, this vague terminology, and I've talked about this multiple times before, it appeals to such a large group. It can appeal to the most extreme pieces of subhuman shit, and it can appeal to the people that are kind of moderate also. They want to program you? Okay, for one demographic, that literally will sound like what he is saying is that the Jews who are in power want to program us all by inserting microchips with the vaccine. To some people, that's what they are going to hear when he says something like that. Now, to other people, to more moderates, they might say, so they're talking about, uh, you know, the, the media kind of wants to deceive us and brainwash us into thinking that Trump is bad or whatever. But either way, that's the problem with this vague language. It applies to virtually everybody. If you have the worst ideas, you can fit what he said into that. If you have more moderate ideas that aren't that bad, you can still take what he said and shove it in. They say that the US embassy in Bucharest, Romania <laughs> was tipped off to your misdeeds and alerted the local authorities you might be committing human trafficking. Um, given that this is the same charge they leveled against Julian Assange or a species of it, you know, skeptical, but I, I want to know the details. Were you arrested for human trafficking? What, what happened? Yeah, I was not arrested. So what happened is I suffered from a case of swatting. It's very popular with people who are large on the internet. Many large YouTubers have been swatted. It's where you call the police and you say somebody has a gun or there's a hostage situation and the SWAT team arrives. Somebody made a phone call to the American embassy saying that I was holding women at my house. The police arrived. And let me state this now. I state this uh, openly to the world. I have absolute respect for the police. I would hate to live in a country where if you call the police saying women are being held against their will, that the police don't respond. That would be terrible. Of course they should come and look. Absolutely. They turned up. They investigated. They realized that nobody was in the house against their will. There was no crime committed. They said, okay, you're not a suspect, but you are a witness to this, along with me, my brother, the housekeeper, uh, the gardener. Everybody who was in the premises at the time was labeled a witness. We had to go to the police station for 45 minutes for pieces of paper. We filled them in and we were let go. I was swatted. Nobody was hurt. There's no human trafficking. There's no women who were tied up. There's none of these things. It's all just complete fallacy. You probably... <laughs> 
Okay, that's not what a fallacy is, but we'll we'll excuse that one. In September 2017, he was criticized by mental health charities for saying depression isn't real. The next month, he waded in on hashtag Me Too, saying women should bear some responsibility for being raped. Oh boy. He appeared on Infowars. Wait a minute. Wait a second. I was looking for something else, and here I I stumble across across this. So. Andrew Tate gets up here on Fox News and is like, no, I'm not really even that much of a political guy, you know? I just I just talk about men and how to fix their peepees, you know? Okay, hold up. So you got backlash. You went on Alex Jones' show. You were pictured with far-right YouTuber Paul Joseph Watson and met Donald Trump Jr. at Trump Tower and posted on Facebook, the Tate family fully supports Trump MAGA. Bruh, come on. We went from you're not political to you've actually been hanging out with a bunch of super controversial far-right losers and have even openly posted that the Tate family support Trump fully MAGA on your Facebook. He doesn't need to be charged with fucking sex trafficking for this guy to still be a really bad person who advocates really bad things. So. Probably made some of these companies mad with reviews on COVID. So sum up for us, if you would what you think the response to COVID globally did to the populations of the West. Yeah, so I Uh certainly made the MAGA my views on COVID. I don't want to go to conspiracy theory, and I would also never kill myself. Let me just say that here for for, for the record. (laughs) But at the time of COVID- He's like, man, this guy's great. He's not really too big. He's not a very big fan of women. He hates the media. He's- not a conspiracy theorist, except COVID isn't that big of a deal because they just want to control us. <laughs> man, this dude is the best. He's a baller. Look at Tucker, man. Get you, a, get you a man who smiles at your jokes the way Tucker smiles at Andrew Tate's jokes. Look at that. Look at that face. That is the face of a man who is very happy. You love to see it. <laughs> just kidding. No, actually, y- your happiness is my sadness, Tucker. At the time of COVID first being announced, my brother and I decided to, we sat and had a very logical conversation and we sat and said, we're two young fighting age males. If COVID can kill us, then the world is over. It's zombie apocalypse time. So there's no point hiding. We may as well go out with a bang. So my brother and I flew to Stockholm, Sweden. Wait, (laughs) I can't, I just can't do it. We sat down and we had an incredibly logical conversation about how if this disease actually manages to kill us, then this will be a zombie apocalypse. Okay? Logic, bros. Now, I don't know if many people know this, but Sweden never closed down. Stockholm and Sweden had never closed down, never made you wear masks, never mandated the vaccine. At the very beginning of COVID, when the rules were strictest, when Florida was still closed, when oh, Miami was still closed. Look at him. He is, he's just so... Look at, look at Tucker's face. He's just like, yeah, you can see him kind of trying to hold back his smirk. He's like, yes, you're saying everything that I want you to say. Ooh. When Florida was still closed, when Miami was still closed, when the Republican states were still closed, Stockholm, Sweden was wide open with full nightclubs and a party scene like you've never seen. And we lived in Sweden for three solid months with zero restrictions, zero worry or interest in COVID. It was like the world was completely normal. And from there, when we left, obviously... Wow, 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 wow. Frontman behind Sweden's coronavirus strategy regrets the high death toll. <sighs> Oof, I hate it when this happens. God, when you try to reference something to support your point and then you look it up and it actually destroys your point. Oh, God. Man, I would just hate to be a conservative. Sweden, which has never imposed a full lockdown, has seen nearly 350,000 cases and more than 7,800 deaths, a lot more than its Scandinavian neighbors. Instead of relying on legal sanctions, Sweden appeals to citizens' sense of responsibility and civic duty and issues only recommendations. There are no sanctions if they are ignored. They never imposed a nationwide lockdown. Bars and restaurants have remained open. Okay, so what Taint here is, is saying is, sounds correct. However, earlier this week, schools across the Stockholm region were asked to switch to distance learning. Sweden killed it. I don't know what this guy is talking about. Just Google the stats. Sweden death counts are lower than many European countries. So it's been called a uh, failure. Sweden has had more deaths than the rest of the Nordic countries. Oh, chatter. Listen up, okay? Combined. Ooh. Oh, no. Sweden has had more deaths than the rest of the Nordic countries combined. This has led to criticism from the country's neighbors, Norway, Denmark, and Finland, that its less strict approach is putting their own measures at risk. Coronavirus deaths in Europe as of August 19th, 2022 by country per 100,000 population. So Sweden is right here, okay? They had um, 190.58, and as opposed to all of these other areas, 
including Norway, Finland, Denmark, they did horribly. Now, of course, yeah, did they do as bad as humanly possible? No. There were less deaths in Sweden, for example, than the United Kingdom. If we're going to compare this to the other Nordic and European countries, I mean, here we have Germany, Switzerland, Ireland, uh, Denmark, Finland, Norway, Iceland. Yeah, they didn't do so great, my dude. So thank you for telling me to look up these stats. So now we know that you were wrong. You see, COVID was still going on in, in a neighboring country. You go to Germany and they were having full panic attacks, genuine panic attacks if you didn't have a mask on. And it was just very obvious to me. I was like, I spent the last three months ignoring this and I'm fine. And now I'm in Germany surrounded by panic attacks and endless math. This, this doesn't make sense. Huh. And I well, told then why were there more deaths in Sweden than Germany? Uh-oh. Truth on social media. I said, this is obviously an overreaction. The decimation of your income, the fact you can't go get a doctor's appointment for a genuine ailment or a genuine risk of cancer, for example, the fact that you can't see your loved what? ones in their No, final... what are you talking about? People are having problems getting treatment for cancer or other ailments because the beds were so fucking full of dumb fucks that wouldn't get vaccinated or take any precautionary measures. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh my God, he just makes shit up. Days, these things are far more destructive than the common cold. I think that what they're doing is, is unfair. I think it's a massive overreaction. And this is based on my personal experience. And I think at the time, there was a lot of pushback, but I would like to think now that 99% of the world CL was totally right. You know, it's kind of funny, Tucker, I'll tell you. When, it's at the funny he COVID, says this say when like Sweden itself is coming out saying that they regret it. They've had huge amounts of deaths. They have more deaths in their area than uh, all the other neighboring countries combined. And we just looked at the statistics per 100,000 and they also had more deaths. So it's funny that he's like, now everybody sees that I'm right. Okay, yeah, I guess if you hide in your echo chamber. How will people struggle with the cognitive dissonance when this is all over? Because COVID is still out there. Nothing's gone away. The thing that we were all hiding from is still right there, out there to get you. But now everyone walks around and they're not scared of it anymore. And I'm like, are people critical enough? Sweden has 10% of Germany's population density. Sweden had more deaths than Germany. So you're telling me they have less population density in Sweden, but they had more deaths than they had than Germany to analyze themselves and say, for a year of my life, I was deathly afraid of something. Now I'm exposing myself to said thing and I'm not afraid anymore. The media tricked me and I was a fool, but they're not they're, They don't even seem to self analyze and go. I got tricked. They're just like, oh, OK, next thing. Hey, Andrew, now like robots. It's it's mind bending. To oh, there's truth. Tucker. Look at that. Look at that big old smirk, man. He's having the time of his life. He's like, you know what? <laughs> Maybe being gay isn't actually all that degenerate because this dude's fucking on fire. Ovid, you're one of them to everybody else. What did you notice about that? It, it seemed like a two-tiered response. <laughs> yeah, so the story was very simple. I was flying inside of Europe. There's a lot of low-cost air, car uh, air carriers. It's only low-cost primarily. There's not much first class, business class, anything like that. And I was flying and my experience was plagued by endless paperwork, wearing a mask, put the mask over your nose. Every time you eat, you have to put the mask on in between. Uh, I got told off for not having the mask up high enough. I got told off for drinking too long because my mask wasn't on. Pure panic and chaos. And because I'm fortunate enough to be fiscally secure, from there I decided I'll just buy private jets from now on. And when I bought a private jet, there was no masks, no paperwork, no mask at the airport. When I landed, my air stewardess was not wearing a mask. My pilot was not wearing a mask. COVID didn't exist once I bought a private jet. Very interesting. <sighs> we already went over the same exact talking point. Again, does he not realize that like... The one, air thank you for the follow. The one airline is a private company, so it has its own set of masking rules. The private jet is also a separate private company that then has its own rules when it comes to masks and, and a COVID response. What What do you mean? Why Why are you saying like it's as if it just disappeared? Ooh, hey, guess what, guys? When I was down at the city, everybody was saying to wear my mask, but when I got home to my four star hotel and I was able to take my mask off in my own hotel room. Well, it was like COVID didn't even exist because I was rich. And a lot of the rules are only the rules for a certain class of people. And once you pass a certain wealth index or a certain level of money, you can do basically whatever you want. And, and he's right. If you're rich, rules don't apply. All right, Reddit subculture king. Very cute username. Here's the Discord link. And, and COVID really highlighted that to me. And it's truly sad. I mean, it's easy for me to make a joke of it, but when I would fly on a private jet and do whatever I wanted or go to Sweden and party in nightclubs and do whatever I wanted, and then I'd come to, let's say, Wait, England. You going to Sweden and partying however you wanted had nothing to do with you being rich other than the fact you were able to play, uh, pay for a flight to Sweden. Other than that, there was no other, there was no reason. <laughs> that has nothing to do with you being rich. That was the rules. Those were the rules for everybody in Sweden, dude. 
and then see my friend who couldn't go see his dying grandmother because of a COVID restriction. That's truly sad. That's truly criminal. I don't, I, it's really crazy what's happened and how the world's just moved on and the cognitive dissonance that people don't have enough respect for themselves and for the truth to analyze how they were so easily fooled. Wait, okay, chat. Yes, having a, an immense amount of wealth uh, gives you an, uh, an immense amount of power usually, and you are able to sometimes wiggle and weasel your way out of certain issues, okay? You're right, yeah, a public defender versus an $1,000 an hour, $1,000 an hour lawyer. Yeah, of course, I know that, yeah. But this has nothing to do with COVID. Can you sometimes get special privileges and, and treatments if you're wealthy? Uh, yeah. Was that happening with COVID to like a large degree? No, this is the same thing I asked last time. You would see a pattern. You would see a, a consistent enough pattern of people that are rich with this level of a net worth not having any problems with COVID. You would see that, but you don't. Instead, you see that COVID was negatively impacting everybody. It, it's really sad to even think about, but maybe that was the beginning of me being disliked by just pointing out my human experiences during the, the pandemic. But I want to tell you something that's that's actually kind of scary about this banning. It all came so hard and so fast that I don't know if they all just follow each other. I don't know if they're all influenced by each other. I don't know if there's someone above them all. I don't know. But when they go to cancel you, ladies and gentlemen, it yeah. comes hard and fast. <laughs> someone above them all. Ooh, who could it be? Maybe, I don't know. George Soros. Okay, Andrew, we get it. You like it to come hard and fast, okay? We heard you the first time, buddy. No, there is not one person or entity or cabal that is overseeing all the social media platforms. They're private businesses. They're each owned and run by individual, or excuse me, by separate companies and different people. And when one platform bans you, that can sometimes cause another platform to look into your behavior on their platform and then follow suit. That's just how it goes, dude. Andrew Tate would destroy Hunter at a boxing match? I don't care. Being able to physically beat me up doesn't mean that you are uh, um, correct about anything. So cope. Second of all, in a political debate? Okay. You know what? I will just let you have that um, <laughs> so that you can, you know, sleep okay at night. If you think that Andrew Tate would be able to beat me in a political debate, I'm sorry, okay? Even fucking Hassan was able to beat Andrew Tate in a debate. No one gets to tell you who you can watch. No one gets to tell you what you have to think. No one gets to tell you who you have to hate. You're an American and an adult. You can make those decisions yourself. So why don't they want you to hear from Andrew Tate? Who's they? Who does, what do you, I guess this, the social media people at this point. So do you really think that like Zuckerberg is up on his, his, you know, billion dollar jet, um, pumping carbon emissions into the atmosphere sitting here like, turmoiling over Andrew Tate being on the platform. Oh no, people are going to listen to this guy. What should ever be done? Ooh, no, they just don't want someone who breaks their TOS. And if they break TOS a lot, then they'll get banned. Like it's not that deep, dude. Okay. Tucker, just <laughs> listen. Okay. Whenever you get into this sort of conspiracy mindset, just start thinking of your wife. It's not that deep, bro. Finally, it's over. Oh my God. This was, this was really a bad one, man. This was a bad video. Not funny. Mostly just scary and depressing.